What's up guys, Steve Pay from you here from Unique Chrysler and today I'm going to be talking about how you can afford one of these. Nothing sounds quite like that in the morning, I'll tell you that. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is really how you can afford one of these and whether it's a good investment or not. Now, no car is really ever a good investment unless if you know what you're doing, like flipping classic cars or buying exotics and selling them a few, la few years later. Now, as you can see, this is a Hellcat. And personally, I'm gonna do a video soon on myself, I'd like to purchase one. But I'm gonna talk about really how much money do you need to make in order to afford one of these. So here is the window sticker. And uh, there we go. So 82265. Now obviously these prices are, and as you can see, Challenger SRT Hellcat. This is a automatic with a sunroof. Those are really the only options. It just comes with the black leather. And I mean, it does come with the Harman Kardon system, obviously, too. Now, the biggest thing about affording one of these is how much do you have to make to afford one? Well, really, it depends on how many other expenses do you have other than this Hellcat. Um, how much do you have to make? How much do you have to put down on one? Well, really, reality is you don't have to put anything down on one. Depending on your credit, more than likely, you won't have to put anything down. Now, some people have different credit situations, and every credit situation is unique to itself. Now, for this vehicle here, I mean, in the US, you could probably lease one for about $700 a month, and I did a video on how uh, on how much how to buy a Hellcat and I wasn't a huge fan of leasing in that particular video I told you kind of the benefits of why it's a better idea to finance um, But having said that if we are looking at an objective of just the lowest monthly payment then yes Leasing is better and well for now for this video say 700 a, a month uh, In the US now in Canada, it would probably be more closer to 950 a month and that's not on a lease that's on finance due to the fact that nobody really here no dealerships really here in Canada like to lease Hellcats now what I can say is yes these are the exact same Hellcats side by side but what I can say is that you would probably with insurance and everything and gas and if you're driving this as your daily you'd probably want to have at the end of a month twelve hundred dollars extra set aside just to afford this vehicle um, now, if you're driving it as just your toy every once in a while, I think a thousand dollars would do you just enough justice. And I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that's actually a Hellcat, a Hellcat Charger that just ripped by our uh, dealership here. Um, but sorry, back to how much these Hellcats are and how much you would have to make to afford them. Really, reality is you probably want to have about twelve hundred dollars extra at the end of a month. And what I mean by extra is, let's say. After all expenses, you know, you have at the end of a month about $1,200 extra going into a savings account or whatever it may be. That money would probably make you comfortably enough to afford this vehicle. Um, you know, er, like I say though, every si situation is unique to itself. You can put money down and lower your monthly payment as well if that's something that's an objective, to, something that is going to help you with your payments then sure do it uh, I always recommend putting money down um, uh, well it depends on the situation if it's zero percent then it's kind of pointless to put money down in my opinion but really reality is is that these cars aren't the most expensive cars uh, to afford out there you can have 707 horsepower for a relatively decent amount I mean um, there's very few cars in this category that you can lease for that amount and have just as much fun in these things now these cars are really just for fun they're a great looking car and they're an enthusiast car you have to be a certain type of person to really like this car um nobody nobody's going to come into my dealership here and say oh yeah well i'm looking for a challenger and you know i 
I just, they see a Hellcat and they go, oh, what's this? You know, and you have to explain it. And that never happens. Anybody who comes to buy this vehicle knows what this vehicle is, knows what it's about. They understand what they're getting themselves into. Now, depending on your situation, can a 19 year old own this car? Yes, of course, depending on how much money you make, how what is comfortable with you. Can a, you know, 65 year old then also afford this car? Of course you can. Um, it really depends on your credit situation and all of that. Now here I'm gonna walk around this Charger Hellcat as well and the Charger is in a very similar boat as well as the Challenger. So I'll, talk, I'll just show you a little bit of it as well. Now, personally, I talked about which one I would personally get between the two, probably the Challenger, just because I am a younger, younger person and I don't have anybody really to drive around besides myself as of right now and maybe a friend or two once in a while. And if I do have more people, I'll take them in my truck and I don't have to worry about that. But quite honestly, the Challenger for me works out a little bit better but the Charger is a great looking car as well. So, personally, which one to afford? If they're really around the same, that's what you need them for, right? What is your preference on what vehicle you should buy? And, I mean, like I said, this is a very specific type of person. If this is your dream car, which I know many people it is, then I recommend, you know, figure out a way to make a couple extra bucks a month and finance one of these or uh, lease it, whatever makes you comfortable uh, with uh, your payments and figure out how you can afford it because it's not a huge expense to add on. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not for what you're getting. You're not financing, you know, an R8 or something like that or a GTR and you're getting pretty close now. I know a lot of people are gonna say a GTR is faster now. Yeah, it is. Um, off a of line, it definitely is. Um, but it's a very similar car, and like I say, you have to love this car in order to buy it. But that's pretty much uh, how much you'd have to make. I'd say $1,200 a month would make it comfortable to own this car, and $1,200 a month would have to be, you know, extra money on the side. If you're just looking, if you have no expenses or anything at all, then, you know, I think if you make fifteen sixteen hundred dollars a month you would be more than comfortable with this vehicle because that would give you enough money to you know have some money to spend on other things and you could just drive this um, but yeah no if you're looking some people say you know if I'm gonna spend that kind of money every month then I'm gonna drive it every day hey by all means drive it every every day you can drive one of these cars every day they're very spacious on the inside they're very comfortable the seats the ride is nice too if you had to like just because it has 707 horsepower doesn't mean it's a pain to drive every day. I mean, yeah, okay, in the rain and, yeah, I mean, in the snow, if you really want to attempt driving it in the snow. I've seen some videos of some guys driving them in the snow, and they are obviously not very good in the snow. But, for honestly, if you wanted to drive one every day, you definitely could. Myself, I would just drive them in the summer and pretty much drive them as a more casual drive and uh, in the nicer weather, definitely. So guys, if you have any further questions about, you know, how to afford one of these, what is your best options on uh, getting into one of them, please comment down below or email me and I can uh, help you guys out. Thanks.